The Mechanism of Innate Immunity The immune system is a complex biological system that protects our bodies from harmful diseases. Our immune systems are capable of recognizing and responding to hundreds of thousands of potential pathogens. The immune system can be divided into two parts, the innate or a natural immune system, which is present at birth, and the adaptive or acquired immune system, which develops as the body is exposed to foreign substances over time. This video will discuss the components of the innate immune system and demonstrate how they can help protect our body against disease. The innate immune system is known as the body's first line of defense. This means that it provides an immediate response to eliminate foreign pathogens before they can harm our body. As we know, not all foreign pathogens are the same, which is why the innate immune system is comprised of many different components that react differently to pathogens. The innate immune system consists of physical barriers, chemical barriers, and biological cells that can help prevent the development of disease by immediately eliminating the pathogen from our bodies. The largest and most immediate component of the innate immune system is the skin, or epidermis. The epidermis acts as an impermeable physical barrier that prevents pathogens from entering our body. Most of these protective functions occur in the stratum corneum, the outermost layer of the skin, which is normally described as dead skin. The three main aspects of the epidermis that allow it to protect our bodies are its antimicrobial function, its lack of water, and its acidic pH. Firstly, the epidermis, specifically at the stratum corneum, is comprised of many lipid and protein constituents that have antimicrobial functions. What this means is that these lipids and proteins have the ability to kill microorganisms that try to infect it. These antimicrobial functions are primarily mediated by antimicrobial peptides, or AMP, which are naturally found in the stratum corneum and are also secreted in excess to the stratum corneum when signaled by the presence of a foreign pathogen. The AMPs act by disrupting the microbes' membranes and interrupting their DNA synthesis, thereby preventing them from infecting our bodies further. Additionally, when we think of our outermost layer of skin, we normally consider it to be dead skin because it is dry and easily comes off. These are two characteristics of the stratum corneum that are very important for preventing disease. The lack of water in the stratum corneum makes the environment hostile for invading microorganisms. Without living tissue to host it, these pathogens aren't able to attach and infect the stratum corneum. Lastly, the epidermis has an acidic pH, which similar to the lack of water creates a hostile environment for foreign pathogens. This acidic pH prevents the growth of harmful microorganisms but has been found to nourish the growth of normal cutaneous flora. Cutaneous flora is important for antimicrobial defense because it competes for space and nutrients with incoming microorganisms and limits their ability to thrive in the environment. Aside from the physical barriers, our body has many chemical barriers and plates to eliminate foreign substances before they become harmful. Chemical barriers are not localized to one part of the body, since pathogens can enter from many different routes and evade or get past immune mechanisms to travel further into the body. Examples of chemical barriers include saliva, mucus, and gastric or digestive acid. Similar to what we discussed earlier, these fluids contain various AMPs that work together to protect the body from invading pathogens. Saliva contains protein molecules such as lysozymes, salivary amylases, and peroxidases. Lysozyme acts as an antimicrobial agent by disrupting bacterial cell walls. This causes membrane leakage which results in cell death. Salivary amylase is an important enzyme in digestion but also has immune system properties. The enzyme binds to bacteria and promotes further binding of the bacteria to the teeth, thus preventing the ingestion and infection by bacteria. Lastly, salivary peroxidase has the ability to block glucose uptake, inhibit amino acid transport, disrupt electrochemical gradients, and damage the inner membrane of bacterial cells, thereby effectively preventing infection. Mucus is found in the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and urogenital tracts of humans and line the inner tissue cells. They protect the cells from infection by creating a barrier that traps pathogens before they come into contact with healthy tissue. These trapped pathogens are then expelled from the body by actions such as coughing, sneezing, and vomiting. The cells that are responsible for innate immunity are leukocytes, also known as white blood cells. These cells include macrophages, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, in natural killer or NK cells. These cells can recognize foreign molecules because foreign molecules such as pathogens like bacteria and viruses have conserved features. 
These are shared features by most pathogens and are known as pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs. In the presence of pathogens, these white blood cells can recognize PAMPs and mount an attack. There are two types of innate immune responses to a foreign pathogen, inflammation and phagocytosis. Inflammation is one of the first responses of the immune system to infection. Inflammation is characterized by swelling, redness, heat, and pain. These symptoms are caused by white blood cells such as basophils, which are then responsible for releasing many chemical factors. One of the major chemicals released by basophils is histamine. Histamine increases blood flow to the infected area, therefore causing the infected area to appear red. Other chemicals released by white blood cells cause the widening of blood vessels, pain to the affected area, and ultimately can also attract other white blood cells such as macrophages and neutrophils. Cells such as macrophages and neutrophils initiate a process known as phagocytosis once a foreign particle is detected. Phagocytosis means that these cells will eat the pathogen and digest it with their enzymes. There is also an innate mechanism in place known as the complement system. Essentially, this pathway consists of multiple proteins which activate each other in a cascade-like fashion. This complement activation results in pathogen opsonization, which means that the pathogen is marked for phagocytosis. The complement activation also results in phagocyte recruitment and pathogen lysis. Together, this ensures that the pathogen is destroyed by the innate immune system. Deficiencies in the complement proteins can prevent the activation of the system and can thereby result in greater susceptibility to infection. Overall, the innate immune system is an appropriate first line of defense, however, it is not always enough. The innate immune system is able to activate the second type of immunity, the adaptive immune response, which is able to recognize pathogens and develop memory for this recognition. For more videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Series channel.